Okay, we're good. Good. So I can log off now? Yes. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Are you welcome, Elder. Shalom. Shalom. All praises be the Most High, Ahaya Bashim Yeshaya Wabriwa. We're here on the Sabbath about to do a lesson. Uh, the Gathering of Christ Church Sabbath lesson is now in session. I'll make sure, wait for our brothers and sisters to come in, then we'll begin shortly. Shalom, brothers and sisters. How are you? <laughs> Hope you all are well. Shalom. As you come into the uh, stream, uh, do us a favor and hit like as you come into the stream automatically. That will alert other brothers and sisters who may be on standby waiting for the, uh, the lesson. So immediately hit like and uh, we'll show up in the other brothers and sisters uh, YouTube preferences. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, I'm going to hold off until we get more people in, then the lesson will begin. Okay. Let's get all Israel or not of Israel, Romans 9. How are you? Good, I hope. Great. Hope you all are doing well. We are the gathering of Christ Church. <laughs> Praise the Most High. Okay, uh, we're going to wait just for a few more to pop in. We had 132, and right now I know this, this will go up exponentially in the next couple of moments. Do us a favor. How you doing, Pierre? I see you there. I see the brother. He's always uh, commenting on our videos from, from the Neanderthals. Shalom. I mean, from the Netherlands. Well, Neanderthals. The Netherlands. Um uh yes make sure you hit the likes as you come in so that others are alerted so other brothers and sisters are alerted who may be online right now and waiting for the lesson some people just browse until they see uh we're actually uh streaming and then they'll come over as you come in just hit the like like button as you come in okay and the numbers will pump up All right. Well, let's just go right into it, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go right into it, brothers and sisters. And uh, for those who may come in, uh, I'm sure Dell will remind them to hit the like button so that we can get people in this lesson. Um, I believe that this lesson is uh, well overdue as far as understanding our gospel and the work that the Most High have entrusted in the gathering of Christ Church. Okay. And the lesson today will be titled, The Gospel to the Israelites and Gentiles. The Gospel of our Lord and Savior to the Israelites and Gentiles, okay? Now, before I do that, uh, let's first uh, do our Hebrew credo, the Shammai, all of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth. 
Shemai Yasha Allah Ahaya Alahayana wa Ahaya Akad. 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 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. How are you doing, brothers and sisters? I hope you're well. Shalom. Shabbat, what you got? <laughs> We're here this Sabbath, brothers and sisters, to give all praises to the Most High. Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya Warriwak. Before we go in, I would like to say thank you, brothers and sisters, for all your contributions uh, that have helped us. Uh, with our central location in Pennsylvania. We just seen the carpet uh, the other day, and it's all coming together real well. And it will be finished and ready to go uh, by the time we do our grand opening for the central location mid-January. But January 1st was a deadline, and guess what? A few more days, we'll be good to go. <laughs> Thanks to you. So I would like to thank you for helping with the central location. This will help centralize and help our brothers and sisters in remote locations who may not have a church. We're going to be able to, to now send out ministers to the other areas uh, due to our central location and headquarters established in Pennsylvania. And this will be our central location worldwide that can actually help us, you know, uh, quantify and speed up the work and be more efficient in our ministry. I know a lot of you have issues where you're sending emails and we do get back with you, but not at a timely fashion. A lot of those things will be corrected because we will have the administration working around the clock at our central headquarters. You will see us all over the earth where there's a city, where there's a place for ministry. You'll see the white, the gathering of Christ church, and it's due to your contributions and help towards the work, the water. Okay, I would like to say a, a, a hearty thank you or thawada in Hebrew to all of you, especially all of you who have, on top of that, who have supported the Hebrew and Bible Academy and all these things. Um, and, and, you know, we went into the creation of the universe mm -hmm. like never, like, like we haven't done it ever last week. And we're going into this week in the Hebrew and Bible Academy, tracing the serpent seed. We're going to show you the many gods that fell to this earth that are worshipped by all the Gentile heathenistic uh, uh, religions in the earth today. The gods who fell under Lucifer. Okay, they are controlling, they are the controllers and governors and judges over the politicians who are established in the earth. We're going to go into that. Yes, Lucifer is a man. He eventually fell to earth. He was an angel. We're going to prove this tomorrow, that he didn't only fall by himself. Other angels became the powers over this earth who control all governments. All governments are centralized under fallen angels. As in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And this is one of the greatest cover-ups, okay, in Christian history. One of the greatest cover-ups was the claim that angels didn't come to this earth and deal with women. It's a cover-up. We're going to go into that tomorrow. On every side, the Bible side and how the conspirators have conspired to hide the gods they worship. Tomorrow, you'll hear that in the academy. And you guess what? You don't want to miss it. If you haven't enrolled Send an, send an email to gathering as one at AOL.com. You don't want to miss this lesson. Okay. Uh, the mystery of Atlantis and all this is tied to the falling angels. You don't want to miss this. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. And now if you either you can now the quicker way to actually deal with it is to enroll is to go to historytimes.org. You can enroll right there. Historytimes.org. If you have a credit card or whatever the case is, you can use it. It's only $50 a month. You'll get three months of lessons that you would have never 
understood or never ran into in the world. It's more so a controlled class environment that the Gathered Christ Church elders have slaved over and actually making lessons and putting things together in a controlled environment to actually deliver the true understanding of the Bible to you. There's no class on earth like this. It's a three month period. You don't want to miss it. And we're only in the, in the second week, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now we up to 322. I might as well jump right in. Okay. Another way you can enroll in the Academy is you can go to, um, you can go to gathering of mm -hmm. and you'll see a tab for the Academy. It'll give you all the uh, links and the information on how to enroll directly from the website, historytimes.org. Or if you don't know one way or the other, just send an email to gathering as one at AOL.com. Right. Now, through the spirit of the Most High, Ahia and his son Christ, it has spurned me to go into this particular a lesson today, the gospel to the Israelites as well as the Gentiles. Now, why? What has stimulated this? Because we have other lessons to go into, and I'll be more than happy to answer some questions. But just a few days ago, I uh, I got a call from the elders uh, and the deacons in Texas to say that there was a, a run-in where one of the other camps came questioning some of our brothers on the street who were just giving out flyers to those who had no understanding, uh, who may be from the church or was walking around in front of a place of, of commerce, and you have other Israelites who began to engage our church and try to film things, uh, engaging younger brothers in our church, right? To the point where some of them actually went to our uh, building in Texas, in Houston, and began to, you know, deal with something to the degree that one of the brothers in our church thought they were trying to deal with a confrontation in front of our church. Now, I want to make this clear to why we don't engage other Israelites at all. Okay? We don't engage other Israelites. But there's this what you would call adamacy with these other guys to continually try to nitpick at the younger brothers in our church to try to have that boil over into a confrontation in which their so-called leaders will be engaging us. It's sort of an instigation type thing in which a lot of these so-called Israelite groups or leaders uh, don't talk to their brothers and say, yo, Leave these brothers alone. They're not messing with you. It doesn't affect what we're doing. They're not going to follow what we're saying anyway. There's so many people, billions of people out there that we can spread whatever information we're teaching. In respect to them, we do what Christ said. We don't go to any other group's teachings and if they're giving out flyers or try to engage them for any reason. And we're going to show you why. And that's why I'm breaking down the day the gospel to the Israelites as well as the Gentiles. It's against Christ. It would be against Christ if I was to engage these brothers. OK, that are giving out flyers and all that. It would be against Christ. I'm going to show you why. OK, with we're working under the apostleship and orders of Christ, according to the Bible, brothers and sisters. Now, usually they try to do these things so that they can uh, put up a video to try to show that maybe they know more than other brothers on the street or whatever the case is. Now, mind you, in this, before we did anything, and I want to put it out there, we corrected our brothers who even allowed these brothers to come up and say anything and say, listen, you should have ignored these brothers. We told you that based on the works of the church and the church will continue to grow, eventually these people are going to feel a type, certain type of way and will begin to engage us. And if they try to engage us, you know who their leader are. You tell them, tell their leader to contact Elder Ricard Shiar. And that's it. Because they know me. 
Okay? They know me. So if they wanted to speak to us, they wouldn't use the underlings to try to engage the people that we're teaching as a pretext for conversation. We can be contacted by any leader of any group the same way all the brothers and sisters out there who have never seen our videos contact us. Okay? But am I surprised? I'm not surprised that they're trying to engage us. And they want to engage us uh, based on a uh, what you would call an understanding of the ethnicity of Job. Based on the fact that the region that Job was raised in and the history and there's records out there that Job could have been or may have been an Edomite. Now they want to engage us <laughs> on that because if Job was an Edomite, what does that say about the gospel or the doctrine they so-called teach against white people? So they want to engage us on that. When whether or not a white man is learned under us, keep in mind, if a white person or any other nation is learning under the gathering of Christ's church, that doesn't take away from the reward and the promises of Abraham that will be given to the Israelites. So who cares? Who cares? So I'm going to go into the Bible today to show you, number one, why we as the gathering of Christ's church will never walk up or engage another Israelite group, number one. And we're going to also show what our ministry is to them if they would like to come through, because we would never join anything they're dealing with right out. And we're going to also show why our doctrine is to all people, that we teach everyone, including white people, okay? Without feeling intimidated, without feeling uh, as if we're taking something from our own people, we're going to show you why our ministry is the gathering of Christ's church. Keep in mind, and I'm going to break this down to you all, right? Because what they'll do is they'll come up and they'll see a white person and want to focus on a white person. Well, that white person are, is learning from us. That's number one. Okay. So you want to engage. So what they want to preference this is like mm -hmm. they want to put it on film as if we're defending white people against Israelites, against black people. That's the way they're going to try to preference it. Right? Well, guess what? No one told you to walk up to us in, in the first place. Exactly. There would not have been contention or anything if you would have just took your Bible down the street and holler at white people like you always do. But you want to come around Israelites who know the truth, who are actually showing even white people to do the right thing according to our God. At least you can't say that white person is doing certain things against the law of God if he's learning or she is learning under us. And it's giving out the flyers with our information on it. And it's telling people, these people that I'm learning from are in fact the true children of Israel. Mm -hmm. How can that harm anyone? So I'm going to go into this today to, to show brothers and sisters why we don't engage other Israelites. Okay. And I told the brothers in Texas and other areas. And see... I'm a, another reason why I tell brothers and sisters not to engage other Israelites. You don't know what walk of life these brothers and sisters just came out of. Especially in Texas and down south in these areas, a lot of these people are repentant in our church, are repentant gang members. Who, who are repenting from some of the street life and all that they have, they have overcome. And yet you will come up to them and try to instigate that brother into going carnal, not realizing you, you may be running into somebody who, who, who's, you know, who, who once was gangbanging and all that. You don't know who, what, what walks of life these brothers came out of. So you don't just walk up to some people looking for an engagement or looking to engage someone with friction. Now, I tell brothers, listen, at much life within you, be at peace with all men. 
But if you are threatened, defend yourself. Defend yourself. Okay, if someone is engaging you, looking to harm you, defend yourself. So I don't know what anyone think this is. But it's best that you leave other people alone. Because th that's what the ministry says. I'm going to go into it. Now, if someone come up to us who's an Israelite, who knows the truth, who could be teaching others who are without, who don't know any better. Our first encounter to them is not to debate the points of their doctrine. We are tasked with what? Preparing a way for Christ, showing the way towards the kingdom of heaven and showing repentance and what? The remission of sins. That's, That's right. our only conversation we have with Israelites. Because if you're not getting in any way, who cares about any point we're debating? Mm -hmm. If you're if either either of us aren't getting into the kingdom of heaven, what good is the conversation? So the first point of us as Israelites under Christ is to offer what repentance and baptism. If they reject repentance and baptism, we shake off the dust of our feet because we don't care what they believe or what they think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because why? They haven't called us. Christ called us. And that have to be our take. Brothers can't be instigated into and be, get punked or shamed in the feeling that they got to deal with one of these guys. These guys aren't giving out any re rewards, brothers and sisters. They're not giving out any rewards. So if they don't want to follow the first step that you have taken, which is what? Confessing your faults, being baptized for the remission of sins. Putting down the old man, being baptized like Christ was. If they don't take that step, what good is any other conversation? What? Who cares what ethnicity uh, Job was or whether or not he was this or that? You're not making it. So what's the conversation for? Let me go to someone who wants the kingdom of heaven. Because guess what? I very well will, I, I will very well convert a Christian who's black and an Israelite. And he's no different than you. The Lord love him too. <laughs> so why should I have to con contend with you for the kingdom of heaven? So that you can get to the kingdom of heaven. I don't have to contend with any Israelite. Our brothers and sisters up in the Christian church are Israelites. I don't have to contend with these guys. If you want to run around hating and be mad at everyone, that's on you. That's Stay over there. Stay over there. We don't have any time for it. But guess what? This church is going to continue to grow and they will continue to engage us. So I'm going to put up. And, I, and this goes for whether or not they try to find a young brother some way who don't know anything and try to put him online and claim he's a gathering of Christ church. Regardless, we're, we're the elders of this church. So I'm going to set the standard, okay, publicly, so that everyone will know what our stances are when it comes to this. Because guess what? The disciples were engaged. Christ was engaged. See, they was always worrying about what Christ was doing, what the disciples were doing. Right. And this is how Christ and the disciples and others who followed Christ reacted. Let me show you. Let's go to Matthew first. Matthew three. And let's start at the first verse. Now, if it is right, come up to us. Right. The first thing we do. Is offer this. Matthew three and one read. Yes, sir. St. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. Yes. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, this was strictly to Israelites here. Right? The gospel first to the Israelites and also the Gentiles, right? So let's just speak to strictly the Israelites right now. John 
told the Pharisees and scribes and others what? Repent ye. Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So if an Israelite come up to us, this is our response. We're not going to discuss the ethnicity of Job, whether or not you want to teach white people. Because you, you can't stop us from teaching who we want to teach, who, who the Lord told us to teach. So you must be just looking for some contention because we're not going to stop teaching who we teach it because of you. That's number one. So our only conversation with any Israelite is to repent. For the kingdom is at hand. And what is the next step with any Israelite who engage us? Read verse three. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. So we are to prepare the way for Christ. Right? That's the, that's the work of a minister. Read. Make his path straight. Make his path straight. Come on. Verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went, out to him to, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Hold up. The Israelites were being baptized and confessing sins. So we're to offer the same pathway to Israelites. That's it. Yes, Shabbat. And this was water, not word. Yeah, it was water. <laughs> They was, they was at the water. These weren't words here. This was water. Read. From verse 5 again. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. This is the key, folks. Because it doesn't matter whether or not other nations and all these things that people are focused on. It doesn't matter about any of these topics we're discussing if we're not getting in. What good is it? Saying that, okay, this white man can't get in or this Chinese man can't get in when you're not getting in. <laughs> Period. Search out your, your own soul's salvation with fear and trembling. You more, you more so care about what the white man isn't going to get and denying what belongs to you. So we're not focused there. Here's our focus. And I'm putting it out there because I know people come up to our younger brothers in certain areas to try to get some video footage to try to show they know something and all these things. So we're getting in front of it by what telling what our stance is and going to we're going to repeat it over and over again our position in Christ so that when someone see these other things out there, they don't run to these social media things and, 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 and have it get out of hand and believe some of the crap people are claiming. Okay. Here's our stance. The younger brothers, other people may step to or whatever the case don't speak for the, the elders of this church. Okay. We're setting the standard here. According to the gospel delivered to us. First of all, if any Israelite come up to us like they've done in the past. OK, we say, OK, repent. You want some water? We're not here to discuss white people because either of us are white. You're not white and I'm not white. Do you want water to be baptized? OK. I, I, I can show you where a creek is. We can talk about it. We can talk it out as, as brothers. The repentance, the water, so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then we'll see eye to eye on certain things because it, it will be outside of either of our egos. It'll be the Holy Spirit teaching us all things and we'll come into oneness like the disciples did at the day of Pentecost. But they had to do what? They had to, to walk that straight path and be baptized first. So I don't, I don't expect us to agree if we have taken two separate paths. And you don't understand what the gift of the Holy Spirit is. I don't expect us to, to agree. 
And I very well would teach someone who know nothing at all than, than to contend with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Read. Verse number seven. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Read it again. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. Now, brothers and sisters, Pharisees and Sadducees were the Israelite authorities during Christ's time. They came to John. Now, at this time, brothers and sisters, keep in mind, John didn't have, quote unquote, even though his family had status. His father, Zacharias, was a priest. But he wasn't at this time in, in the position of these Pharisees and scribes. Right. Let me let me uh, turn this off here. He says what? But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. So they'd seen the baptism. Read. He said unto them, O generation of vipers. O generation of vipers. Vipers are snakes. Always looking to sneak around and bite people and, 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 and cause poisonous issues and cause destruction and sickness amongst the people. Vipers. Looking to bite. To sting. Read who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Read verse eight, bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. What did John say to these brothers? Bring forth fruits meet for repentance. Confess your faults and be baptized and receive Christ. So that's our stance when Israelites come up to us. We're not debating what they disagree with. If they're not willing to do that first. Because everything else is futile. See, we, 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 we could very well focus on the brothers and sisters who are Israelites. Who don't know nothing at all and convert them into the kingdom. Christ loves them too. The most high love them as well. See, read verse nine and think not to say within yourselves and don't say within yourselves. We have Abraham to our father. Don't think there's some sense of entitlement because you are from the seed of Abraham. If you don't first take this step, it doesn't matter if you're from the seed of Abraham, according to the Bible. Read for I say unto you that the most high is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. See? So you just can't say I'm from the bloodline, I'm Judah, I'm this, and, it, and, and think that they give you some sense of entitlement. You must first take the step of what? Repentance. Confess your faults and be baptized for the remission of sins. If you don't do that first, it doesn't matter how much history you've studied. It doesn't matter whether or not you know every scripture in the Bible. You, you're not getting in. Neither would the Pharisees and scribes who probably knew more than all of us. Folks, the Pharisees and scribes didn't have to go through captivity and relearn themselves. OK, but they they were told. The true path. And that's our stance. When the Israelite come. Listen, I'm not here to argue anything concerning white people or anything else. With dead, with a dead man. Now, if you want to talk about baptism. Okay, we can talk about that. Now, if you're claiming baptism is in water. And you are denying the baptism of Christ who was baptized in water. What, what do we have, what do we have to talk about? <laughs> if you don't believe in the Christ, it says, if you don't believe in Christ, you are condemned already. What can I possibly say to you if you're not even going to listen to him? You can't even listen to our Lord and Savior and confess faults and be baptized, but yet you want a contention with me. See, I'm showing you what our stances are in the future, brothers and sisters. 
so that if there's anything you will know that, listen, we haven't engaged anyone at any time. And if someone wants to speak to us about baptism, they have our number. <laughs> okay. Because that's all they can talk to us about. That's it. Now, we've had many brothers who have converted from that, from, from the Pharisee and scribe side. Matter of fact, Paul was a Pharisee. Okay, matter of fact, I grew up in a Pharisaical type of doctrine. So I know what they're teaching, every part of it. I can, I can put it on the table and teach and show you every precept they'll go through. But it's through the gift of the Holy Spirit that give discernment and understanding beyond man's doctrine. So I've converted and, and talked to many brothers and sisters who have come out of that. Fine. But our first step was what? Be baptized. Then I showed that Nicodemus was baptized, a high priest. Are you better than the high priest who was baptized in the Christ? And he wasn't baptized with the with 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 the scrolls of, of the Old Testament scriptures either. They were baptized with water. Right. Isaiah, the first chapter says, why should make you clean? Put away what the evils of your doings. That's what Isaiah baptism was actually in the Old Testament and the cleansing of the priest. But Christ is our high priest that we must now follow and be under and be baptized to receive the spirit of discernment and understanding. And let me make it clear. When these brothers and sisters were converted, who, that was from the old, who that? That was from the old uh, uh, pharisaical doctrines. After that, we would sit down and if they had any other questions, white people or anything else, yeah, we would discuss it. I'd be like, okay. I'm going to show you what we teach, what we used to teach in the 90s. I'm going to show you how that's an error. And if you have any scriptures that can debate it, I'm open for it. And I'll show Esau, I'll show Ishmael, I'll show Japheth, I'll show all the other nations, and I'll show, I'll show all that. I'll show the strangers, the mixed multitude that was with Israel coming out of Egypt. I'll show it all. I'll even show Jacob have he loved and Esau have he hated. I'll show it all. But I'm not going to do that before you make the first step, because the first step is written in Scripture. So I'm not running away from anything, but I'm not going to beat a dead horse. There's a reason why I no longer ascribe to a, a pharisaical doctrine. Because in the doctrine, even though we know we're Israelites and we know that the white man through history enslaved black people, which was prophesied. We know all those things. But there's a key element that was missing outside of just the history. And that's Christ. That's Christ, brothers and sisters. That's the key. Everyone talk about him. Everyone is speaking about him. But we have Israelites denying his baptism. See? So the disciples had to learn in order. Christ didn't give them all things the same time. Keep in mind, he told them, be baptized. Fasting and prayer to cast out demons. Heal the sick. He was giving them information in increments. So that they can grow to learn what the true ministry is under him. And then he said, well, listen, go to Jerusalem and there you will receive the promise of the Most High from on high. That's when the Holy Spirit came down and gave all understanding after Christ's death. Seven Sabbaths after Christ's death, they received the gift of understanding, and that understanding became the gospel we're teaching today. But unless they took that first step, they would have never received that gift, folks. And that's the ministry that leads to, 
to helping our people out of this condition. That's the Israelites is one thing to learn you Israel, but then you must progress and grow in the ministry of Christ to the point where the Holy Spirit is guiding you out of this hell we're cursed under. Hope you all understand this. Finish reading, Elder Lawyer. St. Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. Come on. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. The axe is laid to the root of the trees, brothers and sisters. So that means all the groups aren't following Christ. Christ is laying an axe to the root of it. That's what John told the Pharisees and scribes. He's going to cut you down. That's, that's the Bible, folks. That's the Bible I'm reading. So when someone engages us to come to us, this is the scriptures we read. The Most High have laid an axe to the root of your ministry. Okay. If it's not built on Christ, eventually it'll fall. Read. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit. Good fruit. See? Good fruit towards the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible shows you, and it shows, gives us examples of good fruit. And I'm going to go into that in a moment. Read. Every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit Come on. is hewn down and cast into the fire. Is hewn down and cast into the fire. Hell. See, a lot of others, you have Israelites that don't even believe in hell. So what can we, what, what, what can we possibly say to them about Edomites or anything else? You don't even know about what happens after this. You have no idea about the damnation that happens after this for denying Christ. That means you don't understand the judgment of God. So why would I argue about an Edomite or someone else or some, some futile child argument? When, when one don't even understand the judgment after life. Read. Verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Hold up. I baptize you with, with, with scrolls, the word. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. I'm baptizing you with the word. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. And I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this out, brothers and sisters, because there's a doctrine out there in which people are claiming Ephesians 5. It's speaking of not using water for baptism. When Ephesians 5 is talking about a man, a husband, teaching his wife who has already been baptized in the church with water. You have people denying the gospel of Christ, folks, and the baptism. Why? Because no one wants to admit they have fault, but yet point out, looking to point out the fault of someone else. How can you point out the fault of the white man or anyone else when you're not even willing to confess your own faults? Read. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Come on. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, when did the Holy Spirit happen? The Holy Spirit happened. Acts, the 10th chapter. Acts, the second chapter. Excuse me. Acts, the second chapter. When the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples. And guess what? All of those disciples were baptized with water, folks. Mm hmm. And through that step, they receive the Holy Spirit. The fire is the final baptism upon Christ's return. Come on. It's mm -hmm. not. And, go, go on. Yeah. And another key point, the men who received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, after they received this Holy Spirit, afterwards, they went to the water and got baptized to show you. 3,000 souls. Exactly. So people say that this trumps the water baptism. Well, if that's the case, these men received the Holy Spirit and still went to the water to get baptized. 
Exactly. I'm glad you brought that out. There's a doctrine for those who have probably ran into it where people are teaching that John the baptism, uh, John the Baptist baptism, right? What exactly was was more so for John, mm -hmm. and that was done away with because it says Christ would baptize with fire, with the Spirit and fire. Right? They say is that. That was just uh, uh, signifying the way under John. But when Christ came, it was done away with. When those that were baptized with the Holy Spirit in Acts, the second chapter, afterwards, the disciples baptized in water 3,000 souls. Mm -hmm. See? This is how you cut some of that asinine doctrine they have out there. Why have a doctrine that denies the water baptism of Christ? If that's not anti-Christ, what is? See? And that's why I'm showing the brothers and sisters in our church, you don't even have to debate online with these people. You don't, because why? You're speaking to dead men. If they don't want to, to receive the Holy Spirit, why contend and then on top of that, have something sold in you that will actually have you doubt your path, your way into the kingdom of heaven. Because they're looking for an entryway to sow doubt in you. That's the whole point. They already are confused by denying the baptism and they're looking to sow that in you. See, so my whole deal is, listen, if you don't, listen, what can you say to me if you're denying Christ's baptism? See, you're just one Israelite, okay? If you want to deny Christ, that's fine. I can find 10 Israelites who will accept him, <laughs> okay? Come on. Uh, verse 11, St. Matthew chapter uh, 3, verse 11. Yes. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Come on. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Come on. Verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly pur purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. Verse 13. Then and, and you know the chafe is, don't forget, he's taking the axe. He's taking the axe to the root of all the trees of Israelites who deny his baptism. They're thrown in the fire. And at that time, those that are in the fire will know that hell is real. Come on. What verse are you at there? Uh, verse number 13. Come on. Yes, sir. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Then cometh Yeshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. Come on. Verse number 15. And Yeshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. It becometh of us to fulfill all righteousness. So the baptism of Christ was to fulfill all righteousness. Let me tell you, folks, just arguing with another race isn't going to get us out of our condition. Come into Christ's will. Come into Christ, confessing our own faults, and then using the guidance from heaven to get us out of this. That's the key for what? Freedom. That's the key for freedom. And this is not denying what the other nations has always done. We point those things out. But that shouldn't be the focal point of any ministry, what the white man did to me. That's not the gospel. That isn't the gospel of Christ. I'm just showing you our stances going forward with any Israelites, because we will never walk up or engage any Israelites. That's not our mission, according to Christ. Okay. 
We're going to show you our mission. We're going to show you some examples of what to do. Do me a favor, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Let's get uh, Matthew 15 and 10. To show you more of how the scribes and Pharisees would come continuously and look to engage themselves with Christ and the disciples. Even when Christ wasn't messing with these guys, they would come up and try to contend with Christ. Let's go to uh, Matthew 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. St. Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Then came to Yeshua scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? So they're coming there looking for a fault in Christ and his disciples. As if they're defending God's law. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for something to show that they know more or have a greater connection with the Most High than Christ and his disciples. See this? Like what business is, 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 is it of yours how I'm keeping this tradition? How does that affect you? <laughs> See, what, what, what really what's going on, they don't want others to begin to follow a certain type of way Who's learning under them? And that's what was going on with the Pharisees. They didn't, the Pharisees didn't want anyone to show their darkness, their error. So they would try to get in front of it and say, you know what? Let me go and prove to everyone in front of everyone that these guys are off. They're wrong. They're against Moses. See? Mm -hmm. If I can mention also, the key yes. point here is the fact that these men were defending traditions. These weren't actual commandments of God. Exactly. They were upholding traditions of their elders, their teachers, over the laws of God, as Christ is going to explain. Exactly. Go on. Yes, sir. Why do uh, Verse 2. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Why do you disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? See? It's men who set forth traditions mm -hmm. for Israelites, right. and Christ was breaking those traditions. Exactly. Just like you have people online and saying, well, I follow this high priest, and I follow that high priest, and that high priest taught me this, and that high priest taught me that. Those are traditions of men, folks. Mm -hmm. Christ breaks all that, because this is how Christ breaks it. Okay, there is no other high priest, so what are you talking about? That guy you call a high priest, tell him to find some water and repent for calling himself high priest. See that? <laughs> that water humbles everyone. See? Doesn't matter how high you, you're revered by man on this earth. It shows everyone that what? You are a sinner. There is no high priest but Christ. Period. So when people start talking about what their high priest taught them, what they're doing is they're relaying to you the traditions taught to them. And this is what happened during the time of Christ. They would come up to Christ. Why are you respecting what the elders set up? See? Read. St. Matthew chapter 15, verse 2. Why do thy disciples... Transgress the tradition of the elders. Here was one of the, tr one of the uh, traditions. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. They wash not their hands before they eat bread. Now, that wasn't in the law. That was a tradition that was held mm -hmm. amongst Israelites. But here these guys are here to do what? Point out a fault about dirty hands. Straining at a net yet swallowing a camel. They were sitting, brothers and sisters, before the first begotten of the Father. Talking about dirty hands? Shouldn't they have been talking to Christ about the kingdom of heaven, how they should enter the kingdom of heaven? They were speaking with our king. 
and was worried about something small as dirty hands. And I'm going to show you this, folks. And that's the whole point we take when they try to come up against us and all that and try to walk it and try to try to show little things. Well, those scriptures say this, those scriptures say that. Listen, go down the street and talk to somebody else about that. We are we are on a mission from Christ to, to establish his kingdom. To set forth his work. See? So they'll try to point out something smaller. Usually they try to go to younger people who they know still aren't grounded and say, well, check out this scripture. I know your elders are teaching this, but do you know about that? This is how it works. Look about the look look at this about the Edomite. See? Traditions of men. And we're going we're gonna to handle that Gentile thing in a moment. The gospel to Israelites and Gentiles first. But I have to, I, we have to first lay, the, lay this down, brothers and sisters, to show you what our stance are, is going forward. And how brothers and sisters in the church will follow suit. Same thing. They come up to us. This is the only thing we have to talk to them about. What the disciples introduce first. If they disagree, shake off the dust of your feet. After the second or third admonition, one who's a heretic, according to the Bible, reject. If they reject the, the baptism, there's nothing we can debate or talk about. Period. Come on. Verse three. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions. He says, why did you <laughs> transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? Read. Verse 4. For the Most High commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. This should be your focus. You Israelites are dis disrespected everybody. You're not even honoring your own mother and father. You talking about dirty hands? I mean, you have people in public speaking against their own father and mother who call themselves Israelites. Okay. My mother isn't perfect, but you'll never hear me dishonoring her because that'll be breaking the laws of God. I'll always honor her. I, I will honor my father. May the Lord rest his soul until I see him again. He wasn't perfect. But you'll never hear me say anything dishonorable public against my mother and father. That's showing the true, the true spirit, the fruits of the spirit. He says, listen, you're talking about dirty hands and talking these other subjects. When you're breaking God's law and doing what? Going against your own mother and father. When the Bible says, when the, when, when, when the law says, honor your mother and father. Come on. For the Most High commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. And brothers and sisters, you have people out there cursing their own mother online. Regardless of ethnicity or whatever the case is. You honor your mother and your father. That's the laws of God. And that's across the board. That's across the board. Again, we taught this in the academy. Yes, we're Israelites. Yes, the promises come to us. But the Most High didn't only save Shem on Noah's Ark. Japheth and Ham was on Noah's Ark. And we are the ministers of Christ. And we're here through Christ's baptism Building that ark again. See? Come on. Verse number five. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Come on. Thus ye have made the commandment of the most high of none effect by your tradition. You make the... the the laws of the Most High of none effect. Why? By your traditions. Because when you set up a tradition, 
your children will more so remember the traditions you're doing from year to year than teaching what's right in the Most High's law. You understand? From year to year. You have to try to enforce the tradition knowing it's not written. And it will become the thing that brothers and sisters follow opposed to the law that was given through Moses. So they were trying to claim that Moses was abrading the law, but they were abrading the law. And I see a lot of these so-called Israelites going against other nations and all that, saying that that's against the laws of Moses. When Moses came out of Egypt with a mixed multitude with Gentiles also amongst the camp. I'm going to go into this today. This is our stance. No one should engage none of our brothers or sisters concerning their, their doctrine. If anyone has a question concerning our doctrine, contact the Gathering of Christ Church. And when you speak to me, understand my only conversation will be water. And if you deny the water of bat the water baptism, there's nothing else to talk about. Period. Go your way and go on the corner and holler at anyone you would like. Okay? Because we're not subjected to the traditions of men. Okay? We're not under, we're not under the traditions of men. We're following the Bible in Christ and Christ's word. See? Finish reading. Yes, sir. Verse number seven. Ye hypocrites. You hypocrites, read. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, Come on. and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Come on. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. I can go to, through a few of their doctrines. That there's no such thing as water baptism. It's done away with. That's an evil Thought. That's an evil tradition that was set up by Antichrist. Anyone calling themselves high priests are liars. There is no high priest. There is no temple. Christ is the high priest who have shed his blood in the holies of holies. Anyone following a high priest, they are a liar and their high priest is a liar. There is no high priest. See, that's traditions of men. You have men and women running around here have more fear of men than they do the most high. What's wrong with what's wrong with our people? How can you be enslaved under the white man and then in America be enslaved under a black slave calling himself a high priest? Right. It's utterly ridiculous. They're putting heavy bonds on our brothers and sisters. They're putting heavy bonds. We're already in slavery, en enslaved, and now you're going to be enslaved under a black guy. Call him. If you're a high priest, where is our kingdom, priest? Okay? It's utterly ridiculous, folks. There is no need for a high priest because the sacrifices are done away with. It's finished. There is no sacrifices. So they'll teach you that tradition, but yet deny the water baptism. Another tradition they're teaching. False doctrine of, of reincarnation. So that they can in their minds absolve themselves. And, and, and in their minds believe that they can escape the judgment of hell. By thinking hell away and saying it's reincarnation. Maybe there's no judgment for the wickedness I've done in this life. Maybe I'll escape my wickedness, okay, and not, I don't have to repent if I'm going to be born again, right? If I'm coming back, why should I repent? Over and over and over again, our people are learning the traditions of men against the pathway, against the gospel of Christ. And I'm teaching this on the Sabbath. And I'm teaching this on the Sabbath, right before, th through the Spirit of the Most High, who've given us an opportunity to set up a central location before this whole thing fall. 
knowing that what? We're going to be teaching this gospel everywhere. Everywhere you're going to see the gathering of Christ church. And they're going to try to engage us. We know it. Right now, they're just going to the younger of our people, trying to engage them on the little level. But as we grow and baptize all people, you can have other Israelites looking to engage our brothers and sisters. When yet, you will never hear of, of us going up to them at all. Okay? You will see this. And you know what you'll see? Listen, brother or sister. You want some water? Have you been baptized for the remission of sins? Okay. Because you came up to us. We're offering water. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not coming up to you. Okay. You don't want water? Okay. Oh, you want to argue that water baptism is done away with. Okay. They're arguing that up the street. Okay. Shalom. We're here for the kingdom of heaven. We're getting ready for what's to come. Have no time for it. Shalom. That's our answer. We're not, we're not arguing. We're not debating nothing with you. You can't accept Christ's baptism. There's a corner up the street. That's it. Finish reading. Verse number uh, eight. Or in, in fact, uh, verse number 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Go on. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man. Then he says, not that which goeth into a, the mouth defileth a man. Now, let me make this clear because Christians use this to eat pork chops and chitlins. It's not speaking about clean or unclean foods here at all. It's not speaking about pork, shrimp, crab, crustaceans, lobsters. It's speaking of the, someone eating with dirty hands. If you want to speak in specific uh, concerning the delicacy there, it was bread they had on the table, not pork. So don't use this to say, it's not what goes into a man to follow the man, therefore I can eat unclean food. You're not rightly dividing the word by using this precept. But Christ in its proper uh, uh, context is teaching what? The dirt is not going to harm the disciples. Their dirty hands, there's not enough dirt on their hands that's going to make a difference. So it's not the dirty hands that's going to defile them, but it what comes out of their mouth. When filthiness and evil and destruction and deceit and debate comes out of your mouth, that's what destroys a man. Not dirty hands. So what Christ was teaching the disciples in this moment was what? You got filthy mouths. What comes out of your mouth is what's defiling you. Not whether or not I wash hands. See? Come on. Verse number 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? They was offended after they heard this saying. Because why? Christ cut them asunder and pulled their coattail. He showed everyone what they were really dealing with, claiming that they're down with the Most High and they're down with the law, statutes, and commandments, but yet they were denying the gospel of Christ. They were actually disrespecting their mothers and fathers and all that against the law. They were speaking filthy. Now they're going to come and try to claim that there's some unrighteousness with the disciples because the disciples forgot to wash their hands? <laughs> they was offended. See, they got offended now. Instead of, instead of taking the wisdom and becoming better afterwards. He's like, Christ says, listen, I don't care about no washing hands. I didn't, my, my father didn't make that tradition. You made that tradition. We're not following what you're teaching. We're following the Most High God. The God of Israel is not just your father. He's our father too. Who are you? See? 
let me tell you, brothers, a lot of brothers and sisters, keep in mind that a lot of these people that are out here only get the authority that's given to them by us. That authority wasn't established in Christ. If it's not set up according to Christ's ministry, it's going to be hewn at the roots. So these people don't have any authority to come and argue doctrine. Okay. Finish reading. Verse 13. But he answered and said, Come on. Every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Period. Come on. Verse 14. Let them alone. So, so now the disciples, now Christ is telling the disciples, leave them alone. That's why we don't engage these other brothers. And sit. we know what they're teaching isn't correct. But that's not our position to engage them while they're out uh, giving out flyers or teaching on the street. That's not our position. Christ told us to let them alone. To leave them alone. That's why we don't engage them. John the Baptist didn't go, go out seeking, I mean, Pharisees and scribes. Mm -hmm. He was baptizing and the Pharisees and scribes was looking at John baptizing. Why? Because they were they were concerned with the people that used to be with them. John didn't have to go seek out the Pharisees and scribes. Christ didn't have to go seek them out. So Christ told the disciples, even when the disciples say, listen, there's others casting out spirits and all that in your name. Christ said what? Leave them alone. That's why we don't step to none of these brothers, because it's against Christ's words to step to them. If they come to us, we are to enter. We, we, we need to, we are to introduce the kingdom of heaven to them. When one is overtaken in a fault, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So it won't be about fighting, debating, or looking to do anything carnal. It's to, in the spirit of meekness, to restore a brother to the most high in Christ. That's our position. See? Come on. Verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Come Verse on. Verse 14. Let them alone. Let them alone, read. They be blind leaders of the blind. He says, let them alone. Why? They be blind leaders of the blind. They be blind leaders of the blind. How can you have done all this focus on another race of people and not put the same focus or even more focus into repentance for your own soul? All your focus go towards hating some other people when it should have been the love you had for yourself to receive the gospel of Christ and be baptized for the remission of sins, being free of the guilt that comes with this evil life. He says they be let them alone because they be blind leaders of the blind. That's what they are. And I see that a lot of Israelites would like to apply this to the Christian church. When Christ was speaking about Israelites right here. Exactly. He was speaking about Pharisees and scribes who knew they were Israelites. Blind leaders of the blind. Don't talk to me about no white man or anything else if you're not open for repentance of sins and receiving Christ's true doctrine. If a white man receive it, it's all good. Okay. If he receive it, okay. We'll teach him. Whoever want to receive it, we'll give it to them. Okay. Because an Israelite, if he reject it, he's going to be hewn down anyway. Right? The whole Roman Empire is coming down upon the coming of our Lord and Savior. So there ain't going to be no white people ruling when Christ come. Okay. So I'm not, you know, I'm not giving the white man or any other nation anything. We're not here to give out rewards. 
We had to teach the gospel of the kingdom. So if another nation accepts the repentance and baptism, it's all good. It's not hurting you. It's not hurting me. See? <laughs> but at least they had enough mindset, enough understanding to take that step. And guess what? No one can deny that person of that. That was that person's free choice. The same way no one can stop us from baptizing who we're baptizing. See? Let's go. Uh, verse number 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. They be blind leaders of the blind. This is not talking about the Christian church here, folks. This is speaking of Israelites who think they have the truth, but yet they run around calling on high priests and all this other madness. They're denying the gospel of Christ, denying the baptism of Christ. That's who Christ was speaking of, Israelites here. Come on. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. They both will fall. So anyone that's learning under these guys, don't try to come to our people and try to peddle that doctrine. Okay? We've been there. We've done that. Don't try to peddle that doctrine because brothers and sisters aren't going to receive what you're saying. Okay? You notice when, when, when the gathering of Christ Church come up, the automatic thing comes up out of any of their mouths is, oh, Oh, they didn't want to let white people in? Oh, that's all we teach, y'all. Huh? Thousands and thousands upon videos where we're actually contending against not only white people, black people. I, hey, I'm sitting there contending with two Arabs next to me on one radio show. So the only thing you can focus on is white people? <laughs> so that's what the Gathering of Christ Church is. Well, then leave us alone then. Okay. But in their heart, they understand that it's more than that. It's showing the gospel of Christ. It's showing that what? With what life, as, as, as much life within a man, that you can be in with peace with all men, regardless of race. And still, it doesn't take away from me being an Israelite. See? It's showing the darkness of their doctrine, folks, and that's why they are against this work. Because why? We're teaching all people. When you go into our church, it's 99.9% .9 black people, Israelites. See? Finish reading. Yes, sir. Verse number 15. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Yeshua said, are ye also yet without understanding? Do ye not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly? So now he's given, Christ has given the disciples understanding now. Mm -hmm. Read. Whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drop. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Come on. Verse 19. For out of the heart proceeds... So, see, see that? Mm -hmm. What comes out of the mouth defiles the heart. And that what defiles a man. Like if I was to go out on the street and everything I talk about is harming someone else or talking against someone else. Right, vile language. V cursing and vile and, and vulgar language before children that are walking down the street. That, that is what defiles a man. See? That's what defiles a man. So they want to point out the small things, but yet they are, they are abrading the law egregiously. And that's what Christ was speaking about. And see, and that's where, again, repentance come in. Where someone can look at it and say, well, hold up. I need to correct my behavior. I need to correct how I'm pre introducing God's word. That can be a stumbling block for those who don't understand that's what I really mean. That's where repentance come in. And yet, Lord, I may have harmed people with my delivery. 
I may have harmed people with my actions and my tongue. What can I do? And Christ would say, be baptized for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. Cleanse yourself. Make yourself clean. And walk in newness of life. That's what, that would be the answer from the disciples in Christ. Walk in newness of life and sin no more. Be baptized. Cleanse yourself before the heavens. Go into that water, which was what? The waters in creation from the beginning. When he divided the waters from the waters. And cleanse yourself before the heavens. Show me you sorry for your evil. For your backbiting, for your sin, for your evil tongue. See? And then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift from the Most High, that Holy Spirit. So there's certain things you'll never see until that step is taken, folks. So it's futile even arguing certain things with brothers who haven't received the Holy Spirit. See? See? Where are you, other lawyer? Uh, verse number 19. Let's leave that and let's go mm -hmm. to Mark. This is, I think this verse is... is, is more? Key. Yeah, yeah, more? Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, go, well, as long as you see it, let's do it. Yes, sir. Verse number 19. Matthew 15 and verse 19. Yes. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adult... What? Hold up. What comes out of the heart? Evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Murders. Murders. Adulteries. Fornications. Thefts. False witness. Blasphemies, these are the things which defile of man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Period. Look at all the things that come from the tongue, from what comes out of the mouth. Adultery, evil, evil surmisings, speakings. See? All these things come from what comes out of the mouth. But what comes from a man not washing his hands? Nothing. The only, the, only one, the only person that's being affected by dirty hands is him. Right? <laughs> so th we're going to break down why we don't engage other Israelites, folks. Christ commanded us not to. So the question is, if they are following Christ, why are they doing so? When there's so many people out there without any information at all. Without any truth or understanding. For those who missed it earlier, if there's a scenario in which someone wanted to reach out to me, it would be a leader of one of the groups. If one of these leaders wanted to actually talk about something, even in private, they could reach me and I'll talk to them and I'll introduce the baptism to them. I wouldn't talk about nothing else. OK. That's the way it should be. It shouldn't be these little guys running around with cameras trying to get other people into some futile debates for social media views. OK. Let's go to Mark 9 and 38 real quick. St. Mark chapter 9 verse number 38. Hold on, let me get there real quick. One second. Let's start at um, let's go to Matthew. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that is. That's it. Mark, Mark 9 and 38. Yeah, yeah. Let me get it here. Yeah, I got the wrong one here. 9 and let's start at 38, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. St. Saint Saint Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Mark 9 and 38, brothers and sisters. And John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. Now, John was speaking to Christ here, saying, Master, we've seen one casting out demons in your name. So these are people that are operating, Israelites operating 
on the outside of us, Christ, what shall we do? Read. And he followed us not, and we forbade him, because he followed not us. So now, John said, the guy didn't follow us, whom you set up. And we told him to stop teaching. We forbade him to do this if he wasn't going to be under our ministry. Now, I'm using this as a comparison, brothers and sisters. Right? That's like another brother going to a camp or whatever and saying, y'all need to shut down because y'all not under us. Because y'all not teaching what we're teaching. Right? Here's a perfect example that will diffuse that thought. In the Bible, he says, we forbade them, Christ, because they weren't following us. How did Christ answer John here? Verse number 39. Read. But Yeshua said, forbid him not. What? Forbid him not. Who are you to tell someone else what to do? Forbid them not. If they're out there teaching and trying to do what's right and bring God's people to, 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 to him, how can you stop them? See? And that's why we tell brothers and sisters in the church, don't worry about these other brothers that are out there, that are, that are not a part of our group. Who knows how the Most High is going to use them? Mm -hmm. Leave them alone. So... So what we don't all know the same and understand the same at this point, because why we all see through a glass dimly, but at least they're out there doing something. Mm -hmm. If the most high can bring me to an understanding as I grow, he can do it to them too. And eventually there'll be no names of groups when all this internet crap is gone anyway. And we'll be able to coexist because we didn't confront each other and offend each other. See? See? Now Satan can't use a conflict in the, in the time of trouble. Excuse me. Can you tell me? I can hear. You understand? That's why I tell brothers and sisters. And, and guess what? When brothers, when brothers, mainly younger brothers, try to overstep that, they are corrected in this church. Okay? No one told them to go try to set up some some internet debate with some young guys who, who don't even know what the work is to try to show, to try to, you know, show that you know something to try to deal with these futile arguments that leads to nothing. So if someone do that in our church, we'll correct them immediately. You are not to set up no debate with no other group, nothing. Leave them alone because that's what Christ said. If you believe what they're believing, if you whatever, listen, it's OK. Shalom. <laughs> OK, but let's not have no conflict here. OK, so that's our stance. Our stance is Christ's stance. But a lot of these younger brothers aren't doing what Christ say, said do. They're looking to engage our church. Read it. Read that again. Uh, verse number 39. But Yeshua said, forbid him not. Forbid him not. Don't stop that person from, from teaching. Read. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. Exactly. If they're doing it in the name of Christ, leave them alone. Right? Because guess what? It can be people who's using Christ's name and don't understand the Holy Spirit. They don't understand the baptism at this point. It doesn't mean they're not, they won't eventually get there. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. That's Christ's commandment. So when you see brothers trying to engage other Israelites and all that, you can clearly see that these brothers are antichrist. They haven't been taught any better. They don't have the understanding that Christ have commanded them to leave their brothers alone. See? See, a lot of you don't even know that these 
orders were given in scripture to keep the peace amongst Israel. Christ gave these commandments to keep the peace amongst our people. You think he didn't see this time? At the end when our people would begin to awaken and people would begin to cleave to like kinds. Well, I believe in this particular doctrine more so and I believe in that doctrine more so. You think Christ didn't see all that? But he made rules. Rules. We understand that people who disagree with our doctrine in certain circles are going to try to teach against what we're teaching. That's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't have no problem with that. We have no problem with it. But you're not supposed to engage your brother. It's against Christ. In public and try to do what the Pharisees and scribes did. It's against Christ. The way to do it is how Nicodemus did it. Nicodemus at night, even though he know the Pharisees disagreed with Christ, began to talk with Christ and learn under Christ and learn what that Holy Spirit was, learn what that doctrine was. And then that leader could deliver it in due time to his congregation, to those who understood. That's how it was supposed to be done in respect. Not all in front of some cameras to try to come up someone else. See, Christ had rules for this. And I'm speaking out and I'm putting out there in the public now so that brothers and sisters, when they see these things, you'll be able to discern what it is according to Christ's rules. Mm -hmm. See? Now, a lot of people may say, well, listen, how can you speak against other people's doctrine and all that and feel a certain type of way if they come and engage you, right? And I can understand that perspective. But brothers and sisters, I'm speaking of my own experience, okay? I'm speaking of what I went through in a doctrine. And, un and based on what I've gone through, I would warn anyone who would, who, would, who would like to keep their family intact. I will warn you from some of the things that I should have been warned from. That's my personal experience, and I have a right to do so. Okay? And, if, and guess what? You can teach the truth when it comes to something opposing Christ's doctrine. The same way I can speak right now against what the Catholic Church is doing. I can speak against what the, uh, the, Bap the Baptist Church is doing. But if I see someone on the corner doing some work that's not a part of our church, I don't care if, they, if they're in the Israelite group. I'm not going to stop a Christian from doing his work on the corner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave them alone. That's their business. Right. Okay. I'm not going to stop them from doing what they feel is right at that time. Well, let me go and let me go crash these Christians that are doing this or crash these Christians that are doing that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to respect their leader. I'm going to respect their minister. OK. And if the minister would like to set up an engagement privately to understand what I understand, like they did in Australia with Elder Gaj and whatever the case is, that's that's the respect factor there. That's how honorable men deal with honorable men. Are you under, you, you see this? And I'm putting it out there, brothers and sisters, so that you'll know going forward what to do as these groups try to engage other people. Now, if they had business to do themselves, then there would be no time to engage other people for real. But finish reading what you have, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse number 40. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. So, so, I, I want to make it clear. We, we not only teach Edomites, we teach everybody the truth. That answer your questions. We teach 
everyone on earth the truth mm -hmm. concerning our Father and our Savior. Right. Everyone we teach. We don't just teach Edomites. We don't just teach Ishmaelites or East Indians. We teach everyone who would want to hear of our Lord and Savior, the truth concerning him. And we teach everyone of our Father. Okay? We teach everyone. Okay? Finish reading. Verse number uh, 41. Yes. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. Whoever will give you a cup of water to drink in my name. Because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. He shall not lose his reward. So if someone out there who don't have the information we have right now, but they have the love for Christ and trying to do the best they can to deliver other souls, that's at least giving a cup of water in Christ's name. Who am I to stop that preacher or another brother and sister from doing that? Mm -hmm. Who am I? That's evil to walk up on brothers and sisters that are trying to do the best they know how to teach God's word. That's evil. That's wicked. See? There's no respect or code amongst our people. But they won't, they, but I'll tell you what, they won't do this to the same people. They won't do this to the white people or the other nations. Okay. It's just this, this dichotomy that happens amongst us where we feel that we have to come up on each other or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Leave us alone. How is what we're saying affecting you? If you have the truth, guess what? Christ will be glorified in it. And you don't have to tear down anything. Okay? You don't have to try to come against anyone. Or not. You just teach the truth, and guess what? The truth will abound. That's the rules Christ has established in his disciples. Mm -hmm. If I can mention this also, as yes. you mentioned earlier, people will try to use this and make it seem as if we're trying to de defend Gentiles against Israelites. Well, yeah. the fact is that Gentiles didn't roll up on us and come against what we were saying or trying to stop brothers' work. It was Israelites, okay? So if it was Gentiles coming up against us, we would have been today speaking against those Gentiles. Exactly. It was our people who did so, so therefore we're speaking on it, okay? Exactly. And let me make it, they always make it seem as if it's, it's see, what's wrong with our people where we can only view things through black or white or either or? Oh, they teaching Edomites? Oh, that means they're not for us. Oh, they teaching Israelites? Oh, that means they, they hate white people. And we hear this on either side. We hear white people talking about, oh, we just, we just more so hate, hate white people because we're saying Christ is black. It seems like our people cannot think. I'm talking about people, whether you're black or white, think outside of your controlled oppositions, your controlled what you would call negative perspectives. You can't think outside of that. Oh, if there's a white person there, he must be against black people. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But here it is, the, the, the so-called white person is there actually providing information yeah. to wake up black yeah. people and let them know that you are the true Israelite. Yeah. And the example for those who didn't come in real quick, and do me a favor, hit the like button so others can see this. You can have a thing where you have our brothers passing out flyers and there may be a few people of other nations who maybe appear to be white or something. Also giving flyers out to our people, letting our people know that they're the true people of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Working with our people, learning under our church, giving out flyers to help our people. And you have others who look at that and be like, hold up, is that an Edomite? Hold up, is that, yo, 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 let's talk about this. Well, no, you go up the street and you help somebody else. You don't have to worry about what we're doing in our church. If you disagree, we know you teach against it and disagree with it, but you're not supposed to come to us about anything. Okay, again, if someone has a problem with our church, their leader can contact us. 
I don't have no problem to have to contact them. We're spreading the gospel. Okay, there's nothing in my mind to call up any of these so-called leaders and say, well, listen, let's talk about, you need to explain to me why you're not baptizing. No. I'm already doing the gospel. They know what we teach. Now, if you have a problem to the point in which you need to engage us, then you can call us. Okay? Because like I mentioned earlier, it's not the most intelligent thing to roll up on people not realizing what walk of life these brothers have come out of. And we teach nonviolence. We teach walking in the spirit and all that. But you can have a brother who probably just came out of certain lives and all that and who haven't, don't, don't understand what it is when someone is rolling up on them. So just for the sake of, 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 of you know, of, not, of things not going out of hand, it's best not to run up on some people and try to engage them. Okay? You have anything else on that, Elder Lawyer? Uh, just one last verse. Go on. Uh, verse 42, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, Come on. It is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. And that offense is actually trying to roll up on other brothers. Now, not too long ago, a few years ago, I seen some brothers in Chicago or what other areas who was looking to debate or talk to some younger brothers who, who didn't know as much as they were still learning under us. But I noticed when I went out there on the street to speak, the same people seen me speaking and came up and said nothing. It's as if they want to pick on those who they know haven't learned fully yet. Now, if I'm on the street, I don't care if someone come from another group and engage me. I can handle that. And how will I handle it? Because they will. And I'm telling brothers, they will engage you. But you are not to fall into any traps. You are not to, you are not to yield any authority to these guys. You ought to look at them and say, who have warned you from the pearls to come? Bring forth fruits, meets for repentance. Are you ready to get baptized? I'm not arguing white man or anybody else with them. If you're in front of me, that means you want, you want to be saved. You want your soul Saved to what, or some information on how you can actually endure until the end to be saved if you're before me. I'm not arguing who your leader is. I'm not arguing none of this crap. I'm not arguing who the white man is. None of that because if you engage me, this is a black man speaking to a black man now. Okay? <laughs> so we don't have to speak about white people. You are a black man talking to a black man. So I have water and that's my only conversation for you. Now, I'll tell you, listen, I'll, I will be. Listen, we can talk about anything you would like to talk about after you're baptized. You don't want to be baptized. OK, Shalom. Go make a video online somewhere. And I'll start talking to the next person and the next person. If there's a Chinese guy in front of me who's understanding what's going on and he want to be one of the Gentiles who serve in Israel in the kingdom of heaven. Guess what? I'll offer water to him. Because that's my same reproach to whatever ethnicity. If there's a white man in front of me and I'll, he'll know all the things his forefathers did against our forefathers. OK, he'll know that. And our people will know the sins we did against our father. They'll learn that too. And say, well, listen, seem like we need some water across the board. White man, Chinese man, black man. What you want? Arab man. You want some water? Let's go. See? If they don't want water, guess what they can do? Chinese man can hit the road. The white man can hit the road if he don't want no water. And the Arab man can hit the world, too. That's right. 
This is not exclusive to just black people or Israelites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, that's how it works. Come on. Oh, let's sit on that. Next scripture. Let's go to um, let's go to uh, Acts five and twenty nine real quick because Acts five and twenty nine. Now I originally went here, brothers and sisters, to show you first how Christ and the disciples initially dealt with Israelites, right? Who were in authority, regardless of group. Pharisees, scribe. A lot of you probably didn't know that the um, the Sadducees believed in reincarnation. So a lot of the doctrines you see today are past doctrines from other Israelites, from Israelites of past. There's nothing new under the sun. But they would like to come to and contend the majority of the time against those who believe in Christ, those who uphold the baptism and remission of sins and 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 and, and hold the path to the kingdom of heaven or are walking in the understanding that was given to Peter, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The contention will always be against the established gospel of Christ. Right? But we all know Christ said in Matthew, let's get Matthew 28 real quick in 19 before we go to the book of Acts. Initially, before Christ's death, only Israelites in Judea, predominantly in Judea, was taught the gospel. Why? Because the Most High was going to establish his ministry with the 12 disciples who came from the seed of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay? After Christ, right... After Christ's death, he he ran into or he stopped Paul on the road to, road to Damascus. Now, Paul was a Pharisee against Christ. OK, now he was tasked with the ministry to not only deal with Judah, Benjamin and Levi, but to also deal with the 10 tribes who were scattered in provinces in different areas on the outside of Jerusalem. He was going into places that the disciples originally didn't go. And it was predominantly to the other 10 tribes who were still living in the old world. But by doing so, he also had a ministry to teach the natural Gentiles. And when he taught the natural Gentiles, he told them, he, he warned them not to magnify themselves against the natural branches in Romans 11. So Gentiles can be taught, but the Gentiles are taught with stipulation. You're not now to believe that the promises that was given to Israel belongs to you. That's not what you're coming in this for. You're coming in this so that you can make it to the other side to serve in the kingdom of heaven. And not deal with the death and destruction that's coming to the rest of your people for what they have done against us. See, that's the understanding of how you teach the doctrine to all people, folks. You don't teach all nations that they're going to get equally what the Israelite promises. That's a false doctrine. But you have these other guys out there telling other people that's what we're teaching. Mm -hmm. They're lying. Okay? They're lying. Because they know no Israelite anywhere would agree to that understanding that we're teaching the same as the Christian church, that all people are equal according to God. They're lying on purpose. They know we don't teach that. See, we, the Bible says the Jews first and also the Gentiles. We have our purpose in the kingdom and the Gentiles who be, get baptized has theirs. And I'm setting the record straight so that, so that they can't use that lie out there amongst the unlearned that we're teaching all people are equal. That's a lie. 
Okay. Let's go to Matthew, right? Yes, sir. Say Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Come on. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Read it again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to do exactly what this scripture say. Baptizing all nations, right? Mm -hmm. Nations is a nation. Now, I know people are go to, well, that's talking about Israelites that are scattered. That's in a Gentile state of mind. We're going to teach those Israelites, too, mm -hmm. who are Gentiles in the right. state of mind, in that state of mind. Mm -hmm. So we cover that also. Right. But we're also teaching the other nations. We're going to show you. We're going to show you that that's that's including both of them, not just the Gentiles in a Gentile state of mind, not the Israelites in a Gentile state of mind, excuse me, but natural Gentiles also. But Christ hath commanded us to do what? Go ye therefore and, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Son, the Father, and of the Holy Spirit. So we ought to teach this to all nations, right? Understand that. Now, for those who Gentiles who might think that, okay, the kingdom of heaven is going to be all people equal, right? And there's no difference, then you, you need to be, you need to, the reason why we're teaching is for Gentiles in that in that train of thought. We're teaching Gentiles that, listen, we're breaking you from that train of thought. No empire is equal with the nations who are serving under them. Mm -hmm. Look at your empire. So it doesn't make common sense in the world we're living in today. No, no nation is equal with the nations they're ruling over. <laughs> so if Christ was an Israelite and he's coming to establish an Israelite kingdom, as it's written in the book of Revelations, that there will be uh, a north, south, east, and west gate, and the, the names on the gates are the 12 tribes of Israel, common sense will tell, will tell anyone that what's coming to earth is an Israelite kingdom. So we're here to set it straight for the Gentiles, too, because they're taught incorrectly. That's an Israelite kingdom. OK. So you, if you are a Gentile, according to the Bible, we're going to show you your position as a Gentile. And if and if the and if the disciples of Christ or the teachers of Christ in the earth who are Israelites don't teach the Gentiles, how do we expect them to understand? Right. Mm -hmm. Where are you, other lawyer? Uh, now in Acts chapter five. Acts I'll five. I'll start in verse uh, twenty. We're going we're gonna to deal with the Gentiles in a moment. Mm -hmm. I'll deal in, I'll start in verse number uh, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yes. And when they had brought them and set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and attend to bring this man's blood upon us. Verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Read it again. Then Peter and the other apostles said, or answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Here's another example of the disciples of Christ being engaged by other Israelites uh, who, are, who are forcing them, who are trying to tell them what they can or cannot teach. <laughs> he says, listen, we ought to obey God rather than men. Read. Verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, whom ye slew and hang on a tree. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand. Now, when it says, why, why did Peter, a black man, mind you, 
tell these Israelites who were also black, let me make it clear. Why did he say that you kill this man and hung him on a tree? Why did, why did this black, these black disciples tell the black authority this of Israel? That the crucifix of Christ was a black on black crime. Why? Because the white man tried to release Christ, folks. Read the gospel. Are we giving the white man a pass? No, we're telling you the truth. It was our people who wanted Christ dead. Who brought Christ to the Romans to be crucified. Now, was Peter going to blame our people for this? No, he's going to say, listen. It doesn't matter that you did this. Repent. He died for you. While you were yet sinners, he died for you. While you was giving him up and, 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 and having him be prepared as a lamb to the slaughter, he understood that his blood would cover you too. He's not blaming you. He's saying, do what's right now to repent from your murder, your evil thoughts. And become a true child of Israel. See, while you were yet sinners, he died for you. So Peter wasn't going to blame these brothers. It's some of the same people with fresh blood on their hands. We're at Jerusalem during the time of first fruits, listening to Peter speak. They had the blood of Christ on their hands. And now Peter is speaking to our people. Read it. Verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yeshia, whom ye slew and hang on a tree. Him the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. That repentance is to Israel and forgiveness of sins. See? Read. Verse 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit, whom the Most High have given, th given them that obey him. And when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood up one of them in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, Come on. a doctor of the law had in reputation among all the people and commanded them to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves that you, that you, what you intend to do is touching these men. Come on. For before these days, rose, says, because instead of them doing what was right, right. And saying, you know what? Let me, uh, come to the knowledge of the truth and repent for my bloodshed, for what I've done against Christ. They now were looking and conspiring, conspiring to kill the disciples. And then one guy stood up and said, what, what verse you at, Elder Lawyer? Uh, verse 34. Come on, read the 34th verse. Yes, sir. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel. Come on. A doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people. Come on. And commanded to put forth the apostles a little space. And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, you men of Israel, read, take heed to yourselves what ye you intend to do as touching these men. Be careful what you're doing and conspiring against these men. Read 36. For before these days rose up Thuidus, boasting himself to be somebody. There was a Israelite boasting himself up to be somebody as if he was a, a, a top guy that was sent by God. So when you see these guys boasting themselves to be someone important on earth, brothers and sisters, as Israelites, there's nothing new under the sun. They did this back then, boasting that they are the next in command under Christ and all types of crap. There was men boasting back then that they were that. Read. To whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who was slain. So they're going to always be people who will follow men who are boasting themselves to be important. You're going to always find some men who would back them. 
You had a guy running around talking about he was a Holy Spirit. Who in their right mind would follow that? You have people running around claiming that they, they, they have an unction that they are the top people under Christ or a top man under Christ. And you have people back in that. And the, let me tell you, the scriptures tell you, if you exalt yourself, you will be abased. Mm -hmm. He didn't choose Moses because Moses was the most uh, courageous of men or strongest of men. He chose Moses because Moses was one of the meek of all men. Anyone boasting themselves to be something other than what the scriptures are saying have deceived themselves. And an example of that is what we're seeing right here with Thoughtus boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves. So what happens is you have brothers who will get a following and will begin to hear and believe what some people are telling them amongst their congregation. Man, you one of the greatest men. You must be sent directly from God. Uh, the way you broke that down, you must be one of the high cats from before. And they'll mm -hmm. sit to themselves like, you know what? Yeah, I must be. I must. You know what? And then they'll start repeating it. Instead of when someone gives them any credit, you go back and say, you know what? All praises be to the most high. I'm not all but a wretched man. OK, don't praise me, uh, <laughs> you know, above measure. I'm a sinner. I, I, I struggle just like you. So you have men who begin to believe what others are telling them mm -hmm. and exalt themselves and begin to believe they are above all men on earth. That's delusion, folks. That's delusion. Read on. Verse 36. For before these days rose up Thuidus, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain. And, and guess what? They end up getting slain. Because when you do the research on this, okay, you had men actually joining under certain men to fight government. Thinking that they could bring the kingdom of heaven at that time to, to get armed up against the government. And they were all slain, folks. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Finish reading. In all, as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. Come on. Verse 37. After this rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. The, as the days of the taxing, read. And drew away much people after him. Now, this what, isn't Judas, brothers and sisters, uh, the Judas, the deceiver of Iscariot. Mm -hmm. This is a different Judas. Judas is another name for, in the Old Testament, it's Judah. Mm -hmm. So there's many people who are named Judah in the New Testament. Okay? Read on. He also perished in all... Even as many obeyed him were dispersed. They were dispersed. So you have these other men who, in, who, who begin to draw men under them, claiming they had the truth, and were destroyed. When you do the research on this in the, in the Josephus and other areas, you'll find that historically these were men that were looking to fight against government. Using the Israelites claiming that Christ came and now gave them the power to stand against the Roman Empire and was crushed. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You're not supposed to stand against a government the Most High has established. Okay? And prophecy, according to Daniel, Daniel the seventh chapter, there's four empires that must rule before the coming of Christ, and no man can stop those empires from ruling. Okay? This is their time, folks. This is their empire. Any man that try to raise up arms against this empire, you'll read about. You will read about them. 
So you will never hear the gathering of Christ church, and we are Israelites, but you'll never hear us talking about fighting other races of people and all that nonsense. That's against the Bible. Okay? Come on. Uh, verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men. And the Bible is telling us to do what? Refrain from these men. And that's what the scriptures say. Refrain from them. I know a lot of people look at these guys for entertainment or whatever, but guess what? The Bible says refrain from these men. If they don't accept the baptism of Christ, you're looking at people that haven't even entered stage one of the ministry of Christ. The Bible says refrain from these men. Read. And, and let them alone. And leave them alone. See that, folks? That's why you'll never see the gathering of Christ church engage in any group on the streets. You, you'll never hear us calling them up, trying to debate them and go back and forth with them because the scripture told us to leave them alone. But on the other hand, they'll break this commandment and try to engage others. They will try to break this, not us. See? Read. For if this counsel or this work be of men. That means if the work we're doing, brothers and sisters, is not of Christ. Read. It will come to naught. It will come to nothing. It will come to nothing. See? So that's why we leave it alone. Okay? Because if, if it's not built on Christ's word, it's going to be what? It's going to be hewn at the root. He's going to cut it down. See, and a lot of you brothers and sisters are, are, are prim primarily newbies to this. And any truth you get from Israelites is the truth to you. But you have to realize, I understood this understanding, well, the understanding of me being Israel, since, since early 90s. We're going into almost 2019, so-called, in the, you know, according to this calendar, we're going into so-called 2019 in a few days. So what, what seemed new and fresh to you and entertaining to you is old news to me. I was there, brothers and sisters, when Israelites was talking about a race war that was going to happen in 1992. That didn't happen. I was there when people was talking about spaceships coming down the same time nuclear missiles coming from Russia that was going to hit America and beam Israelites up who have the truth into a spaceship and take them, take them to Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem or to the wilderness. I was there. I was there when a the ball dropped in 2000 and nothing happened. See? See? Now, I'm not going to throw out the truth I received according to my history because of that. But it's clear. It's clear that those doctrines were built off of what? Traditions of men. Philosophies of men. So a lot of that doctrine that's out there, a lot of these people, that doctrine was destroyed a long time ago, folks. And if only brothers just humble themselves and just yield themselves to the gospel of Christ... If only they'll do that. OK, but it seems as if, you know, it seems as 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 following Christ and yielding to his gospel. That's not as phenomenal, phenomenal as as what they're making up this reincarnation and being this person and being that person and and being reincarnated and all this other stuff. It seemed like it's higher knowledge than just following the gospel of Christ and learning how to operate one amongst another. Just doing Christ isn't good enough for us. See? The Bible is telling us here, leave them alone. Because if they're not built on Christ's ministry, it's going to come to nothing anyway. So why should we engage anybody? Why should we come up and try to disturb what anyone is doing? See? See? If it's not of the most high, he's going to stop it. Who am I to try to stop another man's work in Christ? 
See? Where are you, elder lawyer? Uh, verse number 39. But if it be of the most high, ye cannot overthrow it, lest ye happily, lest happily ye be found even to fight against the most high. Because if you try to overthrow any man that's out there teaching the Lord's word, you're going to find that you're fighting against the most high himself. And that's why I even tell young brothers and sisters amongst our church, I don't care how these guys try to come up to you and instigate some type of uh, confrontation with you. Ignore them. If you answer them, you are falling into their traps. Because they shouldn't be in front of you when the Bible says, leave them alone. See? <laughs> Unless... Now, mind you, if they come in there to learn or to be baptized, that's another thing. If they say, well, listen, I need to understand the baptism. Well, I'm going to give you the baptism, but I'm not going to debate the baptism for you. Mm -hmm. Because Christ was baptized with water. Do you want water? <laughs> okay. If they start minimizing Christ's baptism by claiming it's no different than a bath and all these things, then I'll be like, well, listen, brother, I agree to disagree. Shalom. I cannot speak to anything you're talking about until you receive the entry point. Shalom. That's how we that's how we we, we, we teach our brothers to deal with it. And that's how we're going to deal with it going forward. And if any, like I mentioned earlier, if any leader of a group want to talk to me about baptism, you can contact me because that's all you'll be talking to me about. Okay. Baptism. In the rules that Christ set in place, that we can agree that you don't engage us and we don't engage you because Christ says, leave them alone. That's it. Now, if we do agree on baptism, like they did in Acts, the second chapter, where the 3,000 souls were baptized, then we can discuss other things after that. Reincarnation, anything else you want to discuss. <laughs> okay, but the baptism is first. We can discuss the white man if you want to also. After baptism, because what difference does it make whether or not the white man is going to make it when you're not going to make it? What difference does it make? Okay. Let's read. Uh, verse number 40. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yeshua and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. To suffer shame for his name. So here, here's another example of our brothers being persecuted for exalting the name of Christ and Christ's uh, gospel. Now, mm -hmm. let's deal with the Gentiles real quick, right? Let's go to uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. Isaiah 9. I mean, Amos 9, Isaiah 14 and 1, Amos 9, and Isaiah 61. We're going to get it in that order. Um, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Come on. For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So now what we're showing is the prophecies concerning the rise of Israel. Okay. The position of Israel in the kingdom, as well as Gentiles. Read. And set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them. It says the strangers. Now, this is Israelites, and it says the strangers shall be joined with them. These are Gentiles. Right? Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the Gentiles who are strangers shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That's clear. Crystal clear there. Where Gentiles are cleaving to the house of Jacob. Gentiles are non-Israelites. 
Now, obviously, these Israelites are the Israelites who were taught the gospel of Christ and were able to make it to the other side. The same as these Gentiles, folks. See? Read. Verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them, and the land of the Lord so for the, servants. So the Israelites will possess the Gentiles for what? For servants. Servants. And handmaids. And handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. So the, those, the same people we were captive under will be under Israelites and serve Israel. Israelites. So for anyone to believe that there's an equality when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, if anyone believe this, they're Aaron not understanding the gospel of Christ. The Gentiles will have a lower position than Israelites. The same way the true Israelites have a lower position than the Gentiles right now. The Israelites are serving the Gentiles throughout the four corners of the earth. There will be a changing of position according to the Bible. So the, the disciples taught the gospel with this understanding in mind. See? So us teaching Gentiles will not stop this prophecy here, folks. A matter of fact, it's preparing the Gentiles for that prophecy. You see? Are you seeing this? So be careful with what you would call the barren false witness when these other groups saying, oh, they're the people that teach white people are equal with blacks. They're barren false witness. They're liars. The gospel can be taught with the understanding of the Gentiles position as servants. See? Come on. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And we shall rule over the same people who've oppressed us. Isaiah 14 and 1. That's clear. Right? Now let's go to Amos, the ninth chapter in the Old Testament, and the 11th verse. Amos 9, verse 11. Yes. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen... Now, the tabernacle of David is who? All 12 tribes. The northern and the southern kingdom together was what? The tabernacle of David. It wasn't until Solomon's son's sin, Solomon's, David's son's sin, Solomon, that the kingdom was split in two. So the tabernacle of David is what Christ is establishing now. He sit, He will sit on the throne of David with all 12 tribes together as one as it once was in the Old Testament under King David. Read. And close up the breaches thereof. When it says close up the breach, the breach happened between the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. There was a breach due to the sin of Solomon and the kingdom was split in 721 BC. Read. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. So guess what, brothers and sisters? It's showing you the fulfillment of Isaiah 14 and 1 here. That the Israelites shall possess the Edomites. And what? And of all the heathen. And all the Gentiles. Which are called by my name. Which are called by my name. Now how can there be Edomites or Gentiles called by God's name, prophesied to serve, if it's not taught within the gospel of Christ? How will they know? If, if, if teachers weren't sent. 
Because no wicked Gentiles are going to make it over to serve. No wicked Edomites are making it over. To, no evil and wicked and sinful, unrepentant Edomites are making it to the other side to serve. They must learn the gospel. They must learn the truth. They must be baptized for what? For entry into the into that kingdom to serve. No man will go into that kingdom even as servants without being baptized. We're bringing total clarity of the gospel today. Okay. And if what we're doing offends others, you know what? That's not our problem. If you believe other people shouldn't be taught, you have the full right to take your Bible and teach anyone you would like. And no one is going to stop you. Okay. I won't speak against that. Hey, you're doing what you feel the Lord wants you to do. That's your business. Allow us to do the same. Read it. Uh, we're in uh, Isaiah 56. Isaiah. Isaiah. Uh, the last scripture here. Isaiah 56. The 56th chapter. And we'll start with the first verse. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 3. Thus saith the Most High. Keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come. And my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this. And the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Come on. Verse 13. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Read that again. Neither let the son of the stranger. Neither let the son of the stranger. That have joined themselves to the Lord. Who have joined themselves to the Lord. Right. These same strangers we the, mentioned in Isaiah the 14. The same strangers in Isaiah 14. So these strangers that are serving Israelites are those that chose to serve the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Same strangers, folks. Read. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined themselves to the Lord speak, saying... The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Exactly. Why? Because originally, brothers and sisters, like I've mentioned earlier, Noah had three sons on the ark. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. There was, there's a chosen seed through Shem who would be what? Who would be the promised seed who would rule all nations under Christ. Eventually, those who denounce their paganism and be baptized, these children of the Gentiles will come into the kingdom and have entry into the kingdom to serve. Quite simple. Crystal clear. And it's a teacher's responsibility to give that information to them. Because why? The Gentiles aren't teaching this. So it's upon those with the light to be a light to those Gentiles. See? <laughs> See? Are you following me here? Go on. Verse 3. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs, that keep my Sabbath, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house, and within mine walls, a place and a name better than of sons and daughters. Now these eunuchs are Israelites here. Mm -hmm. Go on. I will give what them... What verse are you at there? Uh, verse number five. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger. The sons of the strangers, the Gentiles. Now the Most High have already spoke about all 12 tribes of Israel. So no one can now go to this stranger and say, these are Israelites that were scattered amongst the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this is future tense. This is showing Israelites in the kingdom now, folks. So you can't say these strangers were Israelites that were scattered amongst the nations. 
These strangers are the same strangers in Isaiah 14 and 1 who cleave to Jacob and who are to become servants to the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. See? Right. And, and it's, it's, it's beautiful that you bring out that point because when you go into that scripture cleaving to Jacob, people usually teach it from the low level thing of Gentiles trying to dress like Jacob and trying to rap yeah, like Jacob. Yeah, it's not talking about it's that. It's low level. Is dealing with them cleaving to the God of Jacob. Exactly. The laws, the statutes, mm -hmm. the, the information that was given spiritually to Israel. That's what it means cleaving to Jacob. Mm -hmm. Not cleaving to Jacob in servitude. It's speaking of the righteousness according to the Most High. That's the cleaving to Jacob. Mm -hmm. Those that are cleaving to Christ's doctrine, Christ's ministry, his baptism. That's the Gentiles cleaving to Jacob. That's what it's talking about exclusively. It's not talking about how Jacob is wearing his pants and now Esau is <laughs> sagging his pants. Right. Cleaving to Jacob is the entry point that was given to the Gentiles by the disciples. Read. Uh, verse number uh, six. Also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Most High to serve him. To serve him. And to love the name of the Most High. And to love the name. You have many Gentiles now who are calling on Ahiah and Yeshia. Read. To be his servants. To be his what? To be his servants. Come on. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. So they're going to keep the Sabbath from polluting it. And even the Gentiles in our church. You see the Gentiles no longer going to Sunday worship. They are now keeping the Sabbath, folks. What's wrong with that? Read. And take of hold of my covenant. And take of hold to the most high covenant. That means they'll follow the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Even though it was given to Jacob, they'll follow them anyway. Mm -hmm. Read. Verse 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain... And make them joyful in my house of prayer. In my house of prayer, read. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. For what? For all people. For all people. It even tells us in the book of Revelations that the Gentiles will come up once a year to eat from the tree of life in the book of Revelation. Let's get that real quick in Revelations, the 20th chapter. Mm -hmm. Let me see, is it 21? Maybe uh, 21. In fact, 22. 22, yeah, yeah. 22. Uh, Let's Revelation, read it. Revelation chapter 20, verse, or, or 22, verse 2. In the book of Revelation, read. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And the healing, and, and, and this fruit, or the leaves were what? Read. For the healing of the nations. The leaves will be for the healing of the Gentiles. The Gentiles will come up once a year for healing. How will they get into the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. for this to happen? They would receive the gospel of Christ that's delivered through the Israelites. See? Thereby they'll serve and have full health from one year to the next. Not like in this kingdom. They'll have full health. You're talking about a health care plan. Once a year they come and eat from the leaves and are healed from one year to the next. No sickness. But these are the Gentiles who are learning from who? Learning from those who are established in Christ's doctrine, the Israelites, mm -hmm. who are in Christ. Okay? So we wanted to set everything straight so that now there's no gray areas where we stand concerning Christ's doctrine and who should be taught, number one. And the fact remains that anyone out there, brothers and sisters, if you ever see someone trying to say that they're against the Gathering of Christ Church or they're debating the Gathering of Christ Church online or they're engaging Gathering of Christ Church, know that we haven't engaged anyone. Know that these people they're talking to, whoever they are, I'm speaking of if they be online and try to use our name to get views or whatever the case is, know that that's not what's established in our church. Okay? 
and what we as elders teach amongst the body. And if there's any brother that are amongst us that goes beyond Christ's protocol and begin to engage these brothers, they will be reprimanded. Okay, period. Because Christ said what? Leave them alone. Okay, we're going to teach, our, teach the gospel of Christ. And guess what? If what they're teaching is not co correct, it's going to come to naught. There's no debating and going back and forth. And again, I'm going to end it with, it shouldn't be a thing where younger brothers are going to younger brothers in these camps and all that. If there's an issue, the leader of that so-called group is supposed to come to the leader of the church they have a problem with. Period. So we're not going to answer things on the level of young brothers with no understanding fighting each other unlearned, with unlearned, with no wisdom, and have that roll into a back and forth with leaders and all that. If the leader have a problem with another uh, uh, leader of a group, they ought to go to that particular brother. And in the spirit of the law and in the spirit of Christ should be able to settle anything. That's how it should be. Not these little futile kid debates online through social media to get views. With that, I'm going to say shalom and we'll open this up for a few questions. That conclude our lesson today, the gospel to Israelites and Gentiles. Shalom. Shalom. And uh, before I um before I answer any questions, let me just put it out there again. We're only in week two of our Hebrew and Bible Academy. Okay? For those who missed week one last week, we went into the creation of the universe like never before, showing you the creation, how all things came to be. Also, we, squa we squashed that notion of the flat earth and all that garbage to show you that the worlds that the Most High made were all sphere worlds, okay? We squashed that, right? Also, this week we're going into tracing the serpent seed, how, quote-unquote, gods, fallen angels came to this plane and begin to establish cities before the flood. The technology and all we see today is really ancient Nephilim technology. Christ says, as in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay? We're in the time of the days of Noah, folks. And I'm going to show you that the world powers in this earth tomorrow, I'm going to show this, are being led by fallen angels, and we can prove it. And the Bible speaks expressly of these spirits that fell to earth and are now worshipped by the Gentiles in the form of idols. Mm -hmm. We're going into that tomorrow, tracing the serpent seed, how they've mixed themselves with the bloodline of man tomorrow. You don't want to miss that. And if you want to be a part of it, don't worry about it. If you missed last week, don't worry about it. We'll give you last week's lesson anyway. Okay. And if you're enrolled tonight, we'll give you the information in which you can catch up, at least with the lesson we did last week, to flawlessly transition into our week two lesson. And we have, what, 12 lessons in all. Mm -hmm. In between the lessons, each week, you receive... Um, a test for yourself to test your spiritual acumen from one week to the next. We have an administration on standby 24 seven that are working within the Hebrew and Hebrew and Bible Academy to make sure your enrollment go through and that you receive the links, the PDFs and all you'll need, all the tools you'll need for the lesson before 9 a.m. Eastern Sunday. You don't want to miss it. It's only $50 a month. And guess what? It goes towards the work. Thank you. That's the Hebrew and Bible Academy. All right. If you want to um, enroll, send an email to gatheringasone at AOL.com. 
gathering as one at AOL.com, or you can go to historytimes.org, enroll right there, or you can go to gatheringofchrist.org, hit the tab Hebrew and Bible Academy, and you can enroll that way. Okay. All praises be to the Most High. I thank the Most High for uh, uh, for the understanding to come before you this Sabbath, and I hope we cleared up any inconsistencies when it comes to different groups and all that, and what our stance is when it comes to upholding the gospel of Christ without conflict. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's go down the list and see what we have here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we can answer a few questions, okay? Can you speak on the two witnesses spoken in, um, Revelation 11. in Revelations 11? Yeah, let's get that. And let's get the one in Isaiah where it says, yeah, my witnesses. Uh, this is uh, Revelation chapter 11. Yes. Uh, verse, I'll start in verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. When it says clothed in sackcloth, okay, it's speaking of a time of mourning, okay? That one thousand two hundred and threescore days is speaking of a time period between the birth of Christ and the coming of Christ in which God's people would be in mourning. The two witnesses represents uh, either side of the children of Israel. Israel was split in two, Judah and Israel. Okay, now I'm going to prove this. Let's finish reading what you have there. Yes, sir. Verse number four. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Most High of the earth. Come on. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So it's going to show, show a judgment for those who destroy God's people. Read. And they have two candlesticks, a representative of either tribe is before the throne, praying before the Father regularly. Uh, for our people. Read. Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Come on. And have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And it's speaking of the power that will be given through Judah and Israel at the end. And this end time. The power that will be given to his people again. To do the same miracles Moses did. Okay, read. Mm -hmm. Some of the same power that was present in the work of the apostles. Exactly. Uh, verse number seven. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And we talking about what we what is talking about now is the nations coming against God's people, where Satan is has now lifted up the armies to enslave and to destroy and kill God's people, right? Now, how do we know it's speaking of Israel and Judah? Let's go to Isaiah 43. Let's Isaiah, read it. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. Read. But now thus saith the Most High that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. It's Jacob and Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, go down to the 10th verse. Mm -hmm. And just if I can mention, that represents all the 12 tribes, Judah and Israel, as yes. we are mentioning. Uh, verse number 10, ye are my witnesses. Ye are my witnesses. So that that witness of them uh, lamenting in sackcloth for a period of time is our people suffering throughout the four corners of the earth under the Gentiles until the Most High uh, endow power on his chosen. That's what it's speaking of. And it says their dead bodies lie in the street. When you, that, that dead bodies is Ezekiel 37 volley of the dry bones the 12 tribes of israel walk, the walking dead uh if i can say so is is uh, is ezekiel 37 ezekiel the 37th chapter is their dead bodies lying dead in the street until the holy spirit revives those dead bones 
So it's not speaking of two men that's, that's going to pop up like according to Jesuit philosophy today. There is no two witnesses that's going to be killed in Jerusalem and then an antichrist is revealed. That's a false Jesuit fable. Okay. Yes, we are setting up locations in all areas. Yes. Okay. All right, we're well beyond the time. We wish you all Godspeed. Hope you have a blessed Sabbath. And uh, our brothers and sisters in the academy, we'll see you tomorrow, right? Bright and early. Elder Lawyer, you'll be going into the Hebrew. What what uh, what what is weeks to uh, Hebrew? Uh, Hebrew root words. Hebrew root words is what you'll begin with. Absolutely. I have no idea what Shapat. Uh, has has dove into as far as the news, but I'm sure that'll be interesting tomorrow. And then I'll be teaching. You got it. You got it. Tracing the serpent seed along with Elder Lawyer. Now, also, I want to make an announcement that we still are taking uh, donations for the new building. There's still some other things we have to get, like a conference table and things of that nature. Uh, so. If you would like to donate towards our central building in Pennsylvania, okay, you can send check or money order to our P.O. Box, okay? It's P.O. Box 946, okay? Gathering of Christ Church, Hamilton Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19130, if you can't, you know, if, if you can't, if you don't have a way to pay online or whatever the case is as a donation, you can send to 2000 Hamilton Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19130, the Gathering of Christ Church, P.O. Box 946. Okay? Or just go to uh, historytimes.org or gathering as one at airworld.com and let us know you would like to uh, donate towards our building. These are the funds that will be used to set up ministries immediately this year being that what's about to go down this year okay uh before this year immediately we need a presence throughout the united states and abroad before they begin to close things down so we're going to take this year to really rally the gospel within america and then throughout the world okay this year will be the year in which we actually you know, centralize all of our brothers and sisters and get brothers and sisters ready for what's to come together within our church. With that, we're going to say shalom. Anything else, Elder Lawyer? That's it. And with that, we're going to say the Lord's prayer and wish you all Godspeed. Ahaya. Ahaya. Bahashem. Bahashem. Yeshaya. Yeshaya. Our Father. Our Father. Which art in heaven. Which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Aman. Aman. All right. Bless you, brothers and sisters, and stay strong, stay prayed up, and sin not. Shalom. Shalom. To Zion. I was lost, but now I'm found. I'm a child of Israel, I heard the sound, you hear the sound, please give me the strength to stand today, with my eyes towards the east, show me the Tribulation 
I know I must stand.